Okay, thank you very much, Chairman. Um, the work that Pat McCarthy and I have been doing on this is a work in progress. And it's, it was based, initially driven by a concern about unrealistic public expectations that we're facing after the bailout. We've been through a very difficult time, um, but it's not, it's not, we're not going back to, to where we were. And where we were, where we've come from, is here. If you look at the spending growth there, everyone in this room appreciates that, but I'm not sure that people outside this room actually appreciate that things are not going to be um, the way they were in, in, in the relatively recent past. Just looking at the, uh, Pat has, has um, and uh, we have a 40-year partnership, we both began at this when we were in school, by the way, um, the critical importance of the expenditure benchmark. The expenditure benchmark is the thing that, that reading the, the material suggests to me will drive everything. And it'll be fixed to make sure you meet all the other, other targets. And what I looked at was the estimates for 2012, which was EU Commission estimates. Ireland median term growth potential they had 0.6, which seems very low. Their convergence margin was 1.4. So our spending growth limit was minus 7. But if you look at all the other countries, the highest spending growth limit was Poland at 2.5, um, which is uh, a fairly sobering uh, thought. Now, the official forecast is that Ireland should achieve the medium term objective by 2018 and meet the debt rule. Um, but there's some qualifications, provided there's continued budgetary rigour, provided economic growth is as expected, and without requiring further austerity measures. But it's, so it's, heavily, it's heavily qualified. It's not, it's not by any means certain. I had a look at some of the pressures on spending. There are um, serious demographic pressures in Ireland. Just looking at, at some of the numbers, the, the, we didn't increase the rates of social welfare pensions uh, in 2013, but it cost 190 million extra because there are more people. Uh, some of us are queuing up for, for that, including myself. The Exchequer Pensions Bill went up by 77 million in 2014. Now, looking at the expenditure benchmark, right, the critical number is 61, 61 odd billion. There's an EU ageing report um, which quantifies the costs of ageing um, in Ireland. And the number for 2015 is 2.7 billion. In other words, we have a fair, quite a serious, uh, if those numbers are right, that's a 4.5% increase in spending. Now, if you're, if you're fixed at a 2.5% or lower limit, uh, you can see where the, where the pressures are. And there are other pressures. For example, under the Haddington Road Agreement, it's proposed that the reduction in pay imposed in Haddington Road will be restored within the maximum of 18 months at the end of the agreement. The end of the agreement is July 2016 in two equal phases of nine months. So we've made, it, we've made an explicit commitment, which I think the government will try and honour, to actually restore the, 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 the pay reductions. There's a weaker commitment in terms of public sector pensions, but it's still implied that the cuts implied to pub, applied to public service pensions over 32,500 a weaker commitment that that will be restored as soon as possible, but it's, it's still there. And I understand we're going to have a white paper on universal health insurance uh, within the next couple of weeks, and that, I think, will have another uh, price tag on it. On top of that, um, the Minister of Finance's report is saying that, that uh, reducing income tax for certain groups in the economy creates extra jobs or sustained jobs, and then we'll do it when we have the resources. So there is... I suppose the general point I'm making is that, um, and this is, comes to it, is the is expectations. You know, my concern is that say election manifestos, which actually are critical documents, election manifestos feed into programs for government and drive a lot of the government program. They're absolutely uh, critical. And I think the question, if you look back at Irish political history, how have political parties differentiated themselves? They've that they're going to introduce new services, cut taxes, whatever they're going to do. Um, and I think there is a danger of escalating promises uh, as we face near the election. It's the point that actually Michael McGrath and Alan Jukes made earlier today is that uh, there is a question, has the political system internalised the constraints that we're going to be facing uh, going forward? And it seems to me that there's a big question mark about that. Um, 
there is a there is a, a, a I think a, a possibility that that the growth in expenditure will crowd out a lot of other things. So, for example, will we be looking at an increase in the tax burden? or um, perhaps a reduction in capital spending. One of the easiest things to do, you know, with the juggernaut of public spending, is capital spending is often the soft option, and that mightn't be a good thing. <laughs> and I think it will, it will um, uh, bring much more focus on distributional issues and choices. We've got used to a situation in which we could do everything. I'm not so sure that that's the, I'm certain actually, that's not going to be the case going forward. Uh, one of the issues is we've tried to deal with the demographic problem issue uh, by increasing the pension age up to 66 in 2014, 67 in 2021, and to 68 in 2028. If you look at OECD work, that just stops things getting worse. And I suppose one of the questions that arises is do we need to accelerate that process? And finally, it seems to me that, um, and I, I, I hope Donald Donald doesn't walk out when he hears this, another uh, potential task for him. I think it would be extremely useful if IFAC or some other uh, independent body ran a health check over the manifestos of political parties at elections. In other words, uh, I don't think, you know, that the overall macro thing was, was, was sustainable. I think it might actually um, help us avoid uh, greater problems in the future. Thank you very much.